Are you there, Nancy? Just not working. <laughs> uh, let me tell you something. <laughs> oh my let me god. Tell you something. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Soaps in Quarantine. I'm Nancy Lee Gron. I'm here with my bestie, Corey Pinnell. Uh, we've produced uh, ABC's GH Now together a couple of years ago, and we thought that it might be nice to gather some daytimers together so we can stay connected with all of you during this health crisis. We can't go anywhere. We can't go anywhere. Uh, and we don't. We've been good. Uh, we're not going to sing Imagine either. We're not? No. But I was thinking getting all the daytimers together to sing 100 bottles of beer on the wall because who wouldn't enjoy that, right? I, I, nobody I can think of. <laughs> we we kind of talked last week about uh, soaps addressing the coronavirus. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think it should. Right. But I yeah. think that we should write a soap opera based around the coronavirus. Oh, wow. Lots of material there. Lots of material, right? What would you call it? I was thinking something like the board and the toilet paper list. <laughs> or the mast. The mast and the toilet paper list. It's much more dramatic. Search, search for a ventilator. <laughs> so, remember search for them all? Oh, yeah. What, what about general hospital? Generally hospitalized. Generally hospitalized. But only... If you're 65 and if you're over 65, it's tough luck. That's true. Days of our hair crisis. <laughs> the interminable days of our lives. Because let's be real about this. Right now, things are happening and we're okay. This is, by the way, as good as it's ever going to get. And as much as I want to do this, I, I was sitting there putting on some makeup and I'm going, I sort of resented the fact that I had to put on makeup, but I'm not going to scare innocent people who are already scared. It's to add to their terror at this point. It's just not fair. It's not right. So I consider this a public service right here. And I applaud best. you. <laughs> but I am uh, one month away from looking like Shaka Khan. I'm just telling you that. <laughs> That's a good look. So are you binge watching anything? Oh my God. We just watched. Um, uh, the documentary on HBO called McMillions. Never even heard of it. It's the it's the documentary about uh, the McDonald's the McDonald's game about Monopoly and how it was rigged by the oh. mafia. Oh, oh, I heard about that. It's good. Yeah, it's like a little five episode soap opera. We've been we watched Shits, Shits Creek for Shits and Giggles. So funny. So funny and fun. We're almost done with that. Um, we've been watching. Oh, he he watches Dexter. I leave the room because you know what what's a, what what lifts your mood more than watching a serial killer kill people? Even though that was written by my friend Clyde Phillips, who is so awesome and so smart. But I, I just you know I, I can't watch unless unless I, unless there's an episode where he takes out the Trump administration. Oh. You're you're gonna cut this out, aren't you? Boy, howdy, am I? Whatever. I don't typically know what day it is anymore because they're all kind of blended together. But we look at our calendars so that we know when it's Sunday because you know why? Outlander. Oh, I thought it was, I was going to say Jesus. <laughs> no, well, that too. Huh? Um, uh, we pray and then we watch Outlander. Outlander. Oh, I love it so much. We, we love it so much, actually, that we're we're trying we're talking about planning our wedding coming up and we're going to maybe do an outlander thing where you have to, you know, in the show, they have to go through the stone and they go into different times and experiences. You're saying that like I know. Okay. Well, people who are watching this will know because almost everyone is watching outlander besides you. Anyway. So we thought at the entryway to the wedding, you have to go through the stone, go through a stone. And if you can't get through it, get in. Hmm? Are there dragons? No. Okay. There's there's all kinds of really horrible things, but there's no dragons. Can, can we talk about food for two seconds? Oh, sure. 
Okay, so I know in my head that we're not go- we're not dying. We're not going. We're not. This isn't the end of days. I know that really you might have to go stand in line for a while at the grocery store just because not because there's a ration of food, but because they're only letting a certain number of people in. Right. I know all this, and I'm shopping like I'm shopping like a frat boy. Enjoy your life. You know, you just enjoy your life and you can, you can exercise later. No, I am doing, I'm trying to exercise. What are you I doing? Do some home planks and push ups and sit ups and whatever. Really? And apparently, since all I do is spin, I do spin a lot. Corey and I go to spin class. A lot. We and spin like, there's, we're like Olympian spinners. No tomorrow. No, um, no but tomorrow. I'm using muscles that I haven't used on a spin bike. So things were a little tense yesterday when I was trying to move. Yeah. I'm not moving. I, you know, I walk around the block a few <laughs> blocks. There was, where I live, there's Fryman Canyon and it's so crowded. It's ridiculous. You don't, I, I, that is not social distancing. No, not a good idea. No. You know, Richard and I were lying around in bed, just, I you know, like talking, <laughs> talking. And he said, so what do you want to do? And I, I literally said, I said, well, where's this going? Let's get up and go in the other room. Oh. <laughs> it was an event. <laughs> and then I was talking to my friend Robin on the phone and I said, okay, I got to go. She goes, go where? And then I said, I'm going to go in the kitchen. <laughs> it's like <laughs> That's the thing. You can't lie to people right now. Oh. You can't be like, oh, I have to get off the phone. I, oh, my <laughs> no, I don't. If you don't pick up, they know you're avoiding you because they know you're right, you're there. So sad. Uh, we have uh, from General Hospital the luscious hunk of spicy Latin goodness. My bud and and my baby, my TV baby daddy, Maurice Bernard. And um, from Bold and Beautiful, we have so smart, so articulate, so talented. And I think he's the only soap actor who Trump supporters hate more than I do. True. Scott Clifton. And he is, he's awesome. He's just awesome. And I don't know why I'm clapping. Like I'm making people clap. <laughs> I'm <laughs> watching this clap for them. Our talk show. All right. Bring them on. Uh, let me tell you <laughs> something. <laughs> Oh my god. Let me tell you something. (laughs) Don't worry about my internet, Nancy. Worry about yourself. I knew you'd have a black mask, but that's fantastic. (laughs) How are you, man? I got 15 minutes for you. Hello, my love. You got 15. Oh, you got 15 minutes? Why what what are you doing? What are you so busy doing? You can't go anywhere. You you know how I get when I when I haven't eaten. (laughs) <laughs> you couldn't have had a sandwich before this you you had the heads up no we were paul we had to go get food yeah to go how are you guys doing we're hanging Pretty in there dude. Uh, well, so paul in. is paul is uh the hunter gatherer over there she is uh, she, she, she the one that goes out man. oh man yeah paul does everything yeah, I, paul right. does it all man have you left the house oh yeah i've left the house yeah with my mask. Where do you go? Uh, we just go and pick up food. Well, maybe just one of you should go. How, what are you doing there? You've got 500 people in your house and, and a, like a, a, a farm full of animals. What do you do with everyone? <laughs> yeah. Let me take my mask off because I'm safe now. <laughs> because you are. <laughs> you see Sonny? That's Sonny right there. Oh, there he is. <laughs> oh, shit. Look at that. He's. He's actually better sunny. than you. I didn't even think that was possible. But I don't. You have an action figure. Don Diamant has an action figure. Eric Braden has an. I don't have an action figure. I want an action figure. When do I get an action figure? We're gonna make you yeah, an anytime action. you want, brother. You All can right, get it anytime a, you want. What I want to ask you both is, what are you doing for exercise routines now? <laughs> Maurice goes first, and then I'm gonna oh. lie and say I do whatever he does. <laughs> Um, Are you boxing with yourself? Oh my goodness! Look at Scott. <laughs> oh, oh! I can't. Ow! It's poking me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. You know, I, uh, I, uh, 
I just go in my garage and I, I punch the bag. I lift weights. Uh, um, there was two night. Uh, there was two or three days that I had pretty bad anxiety, so I didn't really do anything except try to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, and, and you have a thing where you talk, where you're talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I talk Sunday on Sundays called State of Mind and uh I've been talking about mental health for a year. Uh but the last time I did it I was you know, when I'm in that state, I don't tell anybody because it's too difficult. But but if you could read between the lines, you would see that it's not good. But uh, I get through it. It's challenging for it's challenging for anyone. And then when you have when when there's some when you have actual mental challenges that are biological and 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 physical, and it's very, very, very challenging on people right now. Yeah, you know that's so funny. Uh, well, I I have a really good friend who has anxiety and depression, and he uh, he. Uh, uh, texted me the other night and said, you know, cause he usually posts, he is like a funny guy and he does like things on the internet on, you know, Instagram and all that. And, and, and he, he went silent and I checked in with him and he said, yeah, I'm having, you know, one of those days. And, and it dawned on me cause I hadn't thought about it until then, but that, you know, this is, this is going to be a mental health crisis too, isn't it? I mean, it's like, you know, th this is like a perfect storm for people who suffer oh. from, I mean, and I went, Oh my God. I mean, how, how are people going to, I don't know. I don't, it's going to be really, really challenging. Um, you're, you're, you're at, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's, you know, 450 million people all over the world suffer with mental illness. And yeah. during this crisis, it just heightens. Uh, it yeah. just, everything heightens. So if you're already got it, it's, and, and just think of the people who, who experiencing it for the first time. That uh, is hard. Yeah, and they I've don't know what's it. them and what's not, and you know, right? That must be that is going to be very difficult for for people for the first time. Even for me, it's still a killer. But I've been, I, I have some skills with it now. I know how to, you know. Is but I, it's still so difficult. Well, yeah, go ahead. There, aside from you know, you're doing your thing, but are there online? I think now psychologists, psychiatrists, and stuff. Can be to do what we're doing, where you can FaceTime, where you can Zoom, and you can actually still communicate with with uh, you, professionals that can help, right? Yes, you can do all your you can do all your the research you want on you know social media online, and people are there to help. There are organizations, many that I've worked with, who are there to help. I'm doing now. Aside from what I do Sundays, I'm going on Facebook. Live, Instagram live and 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 it's funny because I, I was thinking the other day on Facebook 90 85 90% of the questions were mental health that's for me not GH not Sunny not any of that it was you know, mental health this, this, the self right now is is really just sort of this lovely little escape you know, during the day and yes, it's really great, but I think it's relevant for that purpose only right now. People are focused on what's truly relevant and it's kind of, it, 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 it it's kind of serious business and people want to talk and people want to talk about how to. Maurice, can I ask you, does exercise for you, does it, does it take the edge off of anxiety? Does it cushion it a little yeah. bit? It helps, man. And and only when I'm like like I said a couple of days ago, it was so bad I couldn't do anything. But once because what happens is here's the way it is: when you go through anxiety, depression, or bipolar, any anything, and and it's very difficult. Once you get through it you get a certain edge and with the edge now i swear to you when i'm done here i'm going to go and hit that bag as hard as i've ever hit it because now i'm feeling like i overcame hell and 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 now i feel good i'm feeling good i'm going to work out and 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 that's what happens with, with when you go through these things 
you got to go through hell in order to see the light, you know. Um, Is that a catch twenty? But some people though? don't. Yeah. I was go gonna ahead. say, go is ahead. that a catch twenty two though? Because is it is it sort of circular in the sense that you you know that working out is going to make you feel better on some level, but it's also to to motivate yourself to work out is the hard part. I mean, is that? Uh, yeah. Yes, that's right. It's a it's a bitch, and like I played basketball when I had anxiety just you know and it was a bitch and it didn't make me feel better <laughs> oh no <laughs> and that, but but now it feels great when i work oh, out nice. you know what i the, do the, do you know what i do it just to lighten the just to 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 lighten the the mood a, a little bit you, is that i put a bottle of wine in each one of my rooms so that, for instance, there's wine in my bedroom. I'll go there and I'll do some sit-ups and then I'll move into the uh, Kate's room and uh, there's a bottle of wine and I'll do some push-ups. And then I just go through the house and I do the whole body workout and then I'm like really drunk and it's awesome. <laughs> That's not bad. I like that. <laughs> Try yeah. that. It's movement. That's pretty brilliant. All these people keep sending these challenges to people on Instagram like, I challenge you to 10 push-ups. And I was starting to get a little cranky about it. I was like, I don't want to. And now, <laughs> well, maybe I should. Maybe I won't be such an a-hole. Me too. I've got like several <laughs> pending challenges in the inbox right now. One is like from Bradford to recite a sonnet. Man, I don't know any sonnets. you know. And then another one is you nah. do 100 push-ups. Bradford and Anderson? Yeah. I haven't <laughs> talked to him in years and years. A and he like, he, he's like, he put a camera in his face and he did, he like, recited this beautiful sonnet and he's like okay now you guys and i'm like i i don't i can't I, uh. yeah she's very good at sonnets yeah, <laughs> yeah apparently. hardly are you eating like a lot are you binge eating what are you doing what kind of food are you eating what did you end up getting when you went shopping yeah i'm eating like crap yeah me too like it's the end I, of the day yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like nobody's gonna see my body, so why do I care? Exactly. <laughs> Just from here up. And by the way, my uh, I somehow I don't I I, I got twenty seven cans of of kidney beans, and I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Threw them in my cart, and I started running. And I, I there's no explanation for that. Corey, what are you eating? Um, pop tarts. Ooh. <laughs> there hasn't been a pop tart in my home in. I, I know looking at me, you're like, that's not true, but it is true. <laughs> my home in 20 years. And now I've got two family sized cases in the cupboard. I love pop tarts. Wow. It's survival. I, I don't, I don't think I've eaten a pop tart since I was like 10, but that's, I didn't even know they still had them. Oh yeah. Apparently they, I buy and throw one out the window. You can well, that it. is how my groceries are being delivered by the way. You've impregnated. Yeah most of the women in Port Charles. <laughs> and so who have all have fallen down a flight of stairs. Because that's yes. what happens when you impregnate them. Um, <laughs> or got mowed down by gunfire, by the way. Um, <laughs> does that ever get old, number one? And who's who's the favorite mother of your child? Of one of your many children? Oh good lord. Favorite mother? Yeah. Well, every time I'm at, and anytime I'm asked that question in any capacity of who's your favorite couple, you know, Sonny Brenda, whatever, Sonny Carly, and you, and all that, I always say, love the one you're with. So, of course, you're my favorite. There you go. Okay. Well, you've just wrecked it, though, by qualifying that. Had you just answered the question, you, that would have been. <laughs> but now you qualified it and wrecked the question. So, um, now, would you like to tell our viewers? Uh, about our our very famous love scene, which was probably one of the highest rated uh, shows on GA in the last twenty five years. That's the truth. Um, would you like to uh, discuss that and and maybe talk about your feelings and if you'd like to redo it? It's well, happening. You know, that was just one of those days where I think I my I had a bad foot, right, or something. I had a cane. Yeah, you you had a cane. <laughs> Is that hot. <laughs> nothing sexier than yeah. Than a man with a cane. Yeah. And 
and and we were just kind of like slow. It, it didn't really get going. But it doesn't really matter how good <laughs> we are or whatever or bad we are. What matters is the, the ratings. You know that <laughs> because we the, our director Owen, who we love, was going to be a minister, or maybe he was a minister. So it was sort of blocked in a way that was very uh, religious. <laughs> wouldn't you say but not necessarily yeah anyway. <laughs> yeah it took me about two hours to get to the bed because of the cane you know what i mean <laughs> and then i think in the middle of it you said god this is hard it's like <laughs> fucking my sister <laughs> can you keep that out Corey? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> right? Didn't you i say don't that? remember but i guess that's what i said <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's the best, man. <laughs> Have you had some of that wine? I think she's drinking some of that wine. No. no. So, Sc- Scotty. Yes, ma'am. Um, tell us who you like and who you don't like on Bold and Beautiful. <laughs> huh? That, well, I was listening to, to Maurice just now, which was so interesting. He, he used the phrase, love the one you're with. Right. And for, if you don't know, I'm I, my character... Liam on Bold and Beautiful is a, a whore, <laughs> and he. he I mean, yeah, I, I've made I've made the joke that I'm the Sunny Corinthos of Bold and Beautiful because <laughs> I'm pregnant so many of the girls on the show, um, and I'm constantly going back and forth. He has so many different love interests, and but he's supposed to supposed to be this good, genuine guy. He just doesn't want to hurt anyone, and so he's constantly ping ponging back and forth between different women. Um, and early, early on when I, it w- became clear to me that this was what it was going to be like for me on the show, you know, going forward, uh, I was, I, I, Brad, I was complaining to Brad Bell, uh, and, uh, and I said, I, you know, how, how am I supposed to do this? I mean, you know, I, I look like an asshole, you know, I, I just look like I'm so disingenuous. I tell this girl, I love her. And then I'm in an, another scene to, to, scenes later and I tell that girl I, love, I can't I can't do please don't make me and he that was the advice he gave me he said listen man you just you have one job all you have to do is love the one you're with that's it that's all you have to do. Uh, wow and, and that worked on me I mean that like yeah. that made me click and and I and now I've been able to do it you know without too much cognitive dissonance if I'm calculating this correctly whore means Emmy yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. The more whorish you are, the better. For men and for women, it's 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 crying and screaming, <laughs> right, yes. and and that sort of uh, nuance does not win you an Emmy. I will tell you that. So. Scott, how many Emmys do you have? Oh, uh, th- I I have three. Maurice, how many Emmys do you? Uh, have? Uh, that's not, <laughs> not that many. <laughs> I mean, I have a few. But not that many, no. Wait, one, two, oh God, You got four. He, he put them in front of a mirror so it looks like there's more of them. <laughs> so that's, not, that's not four? I saw four, I thought. That's a mirror? <laughs> that's brilliant. No, I'm no, going to no. do that. All right, here's, here's, I have found myself unable to uh, read a book since I picked up Twitter because if it's more than 180 characters, whatever you <laughs> get, I lose interest. So I'm now becoming illiterate. Maurice? Have you been reading any books lately? How's that for an intro? <laughs> well, my book comes out April seventh, but uh, oh shit! Uh, I already yeah, April seventh. Nothing general about it. I did the audio for it, which was five days of it was <laughs> one of the hardest things I've ever done because yeah, I heard that's hard. I'm I'm not I'm not uh, I have a problem speaking out loud speaking you know which is an interesting choice that you've made to become an actor when you have problems speaking (laughs) well but but yeah you should have talked about being a mime but we write differently than we talk you know so it is it's hard to i mean on on our shows like we get to like kind of make it feel real and tweak the dialogue yeah yeah but it's uh, you know a book it's not written to be said as dialogue it's yeah exactly And when when you, when I was reading it, it almost seems like somebody else's book that I'm reading. <laughs> and Nancy, you'll love this. But when am I, I got in it? to the, am uh, I in your book? Yeah, you actually are in it. Oh, uh, not a lot. Uh, but no, you're you're in it. But you know when lawyer? I got to the, the 
<laughs> when I get to the part with Donna and stuff like that, and uh, there's a chapter called Tears in Heaven, because uh, I, I start, I was bawling like a baby, man. It was crazy. Wow. And then you still got to talk, even though you're crying, you know, you, you got to keep going. And it's, but that's what makes you it. You got to cool. take a pause I, and then. Have you guys read Trevor Noah's? I, I listened to, uh, the last two audiobooks were uh, yeah. Trevor Noah's. He is the best at, at at just reading his own words. He's so good. You should, I would have said, listen to him before you did that. And then uh, Ronan Farrell's, Farrell's Catch and Kill, which was just lots of information. I mean, and that. Rachel Maddow. Yeah. And Rachel Maddow. Wow. Yeah. It's a real skill. Yes, yes. You are real well, in it. It's, it, it just it sounds so much better. It has so much more. Yeah, I mean, that's good. And and the, the and if you have a director who helps you, it's uh, it's amazing because yeah. uh, I'd have to stop and then she'd tell me the you know and then we keep going. But um, yeah, April seventh, here we go. Yeah. This is a question that keeps coming up that I have to ask. Okay, go. People want to know who's the bigger diva, Nancy, Laura Wright, or the bowl of moss. Let me tell you something about that that thing of moss or even the kitchen that thing i've never seen anything more po i've done you know all timer story with you know this and that nothing's more popular nothing was more popular on my twitter than that kitchen and that stupid green moss it is the worst i i got so upset about i got so upset about the kitchen getting more popularity than anything else i've done it is unreal. Everybody loves the kitchen. Because and they kind of halfway love the moss. Some people hate it. Some people love it. I can't stand it, to be honest with you. <laughs> I oh, think no, you're being, I, you're being a little hard on the moss because it did go to Juilliard. It, it, the moss went to Juilliard. <laughs> the kitchen, the, look, the kitchen is great looking and they, they did it great. But why would the fans love a kitchen so much? Because I don't know really why, but maybe because if you were more interesting, they wouldn't focus so much on the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that. I, I just want you to take a good, long, hard look at that and see if maybe. Maybe. And there's, when Kate was, since Kate was little, we play this game, What I Like About That. Um, because in any given circumstance, you can, you can, find something positive yes. about it and it also you know it really it, it's it's kind of turns into a rampage of of gratitude which i think is is a good thing to do in circumstances both good and bad and this one is is, is pretty gnarly so um i'm going to start with you maurice um what do you think is good about what's happening right now what are the what are the good things we can we can find from that you know what's good? I'm uh, I'm. I'll admit I'm pretty selfish, and my wife does everything. And just yesterday, I was breaking down some boxes, and my kids looked at me like I had two heads, and they said, "Mom, Dad's working. He's doing something." <laughs> <laughs> and all I, all, all I was doing was stepping on boxes that's all I was doing just stepping on boxes but they've never seen me do that that's and I'm crazy. having to do things now that I just would normally now I'm going with Paula we go drive around or we do and I'm always usually I'm in my room on a bed under the covers watching TV. Now I'm out doing things, and my kids at night they're playing these workout games. I mean, that's what I think. That's what the universe is saying. It's it's saying, look, we we, we we've gotten away from this. We got to we got to we got to come together. There's got to be peace so, and love. And maybe you could advance to maybe making the bed in the morning. <laughs> Slow down, Nancy. Is that Whoa, all? Slow hey. down. All right, I'm sorry. Okay. Be fine. Your turn, my love. Oh, me? Me? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like what Maurice said. It's, it's weird because 
it, if you know, two three months ago, we were all complaining about how social media and live chatting and all the you know all the all the kind of forms of communication that have us you know not looking out at the world or you know our heads are buried in our phone that was the that was the enemy 3 months ago it was the enemy of community it was the enemy of psychological health it was the enemy of solidarity i mean it kept us from really engaging with one another and and now it's it's just like pure irony that now that is the one thing that's saving us. I mean, it's saving our community and it's and it's saving our our relationships with each other. And it's 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 like we're we're more connected now under isolation yeah. than we were a few months ago. It's the such weird. an interesting yeah. point. Yeah. I've lived in my neighborhood for thirty some years, and there are fathers playing hopscotch in the driveway. With- yep. Yep. Everybody's as a family is riding bicycles. I'm seeing a yeah. lot of fathers, and I've never seen this ever. And 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 mothers too, but mothers normally do this all day long. But I don't see dads do this as much, and they, even on the weekends. And they 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 are uh, playing tag. They are in hide and seek, and uh, you hear laughter and and. and playfulness in the streets so this there's something yeah. that's bonding people in a, in a different way and here's something i thought about today too when i thought about playing this game with you guys there's no school shootings right I, somebody said that uh, recently okay. and, and i i yeah. went wow that's yeah, yeah that's so there's no traffic and the environment is better it's yeah it, this, this satellite looking into china saying the pollution was sort of cleared up uh, it, 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 just think about what's happening without people all over the place all the time. It's really kind of interesting, right? So we don't know how long this is going to go on, and it's certainly going on longer than 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 we would probably uh, expect. So our, I think I don't know how far along you guys are, but we're we're I think we're good till like May twenty first or something. But should it go on? Yeah, I think it would be cool to to have the show written so we could do it on zoom. Like you and I could have, why couldn't we have a great scene right now? You know, without just good writing, it, good acting. It would be, it, it would be difficult in the pauses and stuff. We'd have to get used to it, but I think we could probably do it. Yeah. Poor Charles in, in quarantine. And you know, we, we could just set it up and, and do our show on zoom. I'm sure this is going to go over really big because I know that that Frank loves my suggestions and listens to everything I say. <laughs> <laughs> Not. It's good to see you. Thank Thanks, you. Boys. I miss you, man. That's- it's good, man. It's good talk. You guys made me laugh. I love to laugh. Look at Especially two, in these two, times. Two so punkies. Just one has one more Emmy than the other. But it's not a big deal. <laughs> oh, my we God. Don't to, we don't need to worry about that. That's just silly hey, stuff. Hey, Scott, I, I'm going to go shine my Emmys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> bye, you knucklehead. Go eat a sandwich. <laughs> All right, bye. Love you. Take care, man.